Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel was elected first secretary of the Cuban Communist Party on Monday in the final session of its eighth Congress in Havana. China and Russia to jointly produce over 100 million doses of the Russian design Sputnik V vaccine. Palestine calls on Biden administration to pressure Tel Aviv to stop illegal Israeli colonial settlements on Palestinian land. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the South. I'm Gladys Quesada. Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel was elected as the first secretary of the Cuban Communist Party on Monday in the final session of its eighth Congress in Havana. Díaz-Canel thus replaces veteran revolutionary Raúl Castro at the head of the ruling party. Facing exceptionally difficult times, the Congress reaffirmed the party's commitment to revolution and socialism. Under the banner of unity and continuity, the newly elected Communist Central Committee held its first plenary session on Monday, when the Congress is closing. The event marks a generational renovation of the party with the departure of Fidel Castro's younger brother, Raul, from the leadership. The Congress made quality of life the primary national objective in the years to come, making emphasis in food, energy, security, education and health. The now new first secretary, President Diaz-Canel, has stressed the need to apply the country's enormous scientific and technological know-how in the improvement of the country's economy to overcome the effects of the United States blockade and the COVID-19 pandemic. And Cuba celebrates this Monday the first military defeat of the United States imperialism in Latin America 60 years ago. In Playa Giron, an invasion of U.S. hired mercenaries was crushed by the Young Revolutionary Army and People's Militias in just 48 hours under the direct command of Fidel Castro. Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel stated on his Twitter account that the 60th anniversary of Playa Giron's victory motivates and inspires Cuban people. The new anniversary of the date is celebrated amid an escalation of aggressions by the current White House administration, which seeks to destroy the Cuban Revolution. The president reiterated that in keeping with its historical legacy, the Cuban Revolution maintains the firm determination to confront and prevail in the face of the aggressive escalation of the United States. In Colombia, the Institute for Development and Peace Studies in the past denounced the murder of social leader Dionisio Pai Pascal, bringing the murder toll to 49 in 2021. Pai Pascal's murder resulted from clashes between armed groups in the community of the reservation of Albicito in Tumaco when unidentified men detonated explosives against a family. The crime was also reported by different communities organizations of the Awa people who denounced that in 2021 four members of the Awa indigenous reservation have been killed, causing multiple displacements in addition to constant harassment, harassment confinement in the reservations and threats against their lives by under groups in the zone. The United Nations World Food Program and Venezuela will work together to palliate the effects of illegal United States sanctions. The fund's executive director, David Brisley, arrived in Venezuela on Monday. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Venezuela, Jorge Riaza, met Beasley on arrival. Food security for Venezuelans is the primary goal of a number of agreements to be signed. President Nicolas Maduro appointed a commission of Venezuelan specialists to report on the country's efforts to provide the population with food security and work out the agreements with the fund. Venezuela has been subject to a financial and commercial blockade from the United States, which has included the freezing and theft of external assets, thus preventing the importation of food, medicines and other essentials. In Peru, about 100 demonstrators have rallied in capital Lima, alleging electoral fraud for co and calling for new presidential elections. Protesters marched to the National Jury of Elections, demonstrating against the results of the first round of presidential elections held a week ago. Far-left unionist Pedro Castillo and right-wing populist Keiko Fujimori will run for presidency 
of Peru in a second round of voting on June the 6th, after the results of the fourth round showed them pulling ahead of the other 16 candidates. Fujimorism is red-hot corruption, 100%. We have not come to support Pedro Castillo. We are neither with the right nor with the left. Like the old Peruvians who used to say, move forward Peruvians at a winning pace. We are for that, for Peru. We want the votes to be recounted again or a new election if possible. In the U.S., protesters gathered peacefully for an eighth night of, and day of protests in rejection of the fatal shooting of 20-year-old John to Wright. Demonstrators continued around Minneapolis and near the Brooklyn Center after the killing of Wright by police officer Kimberly Potter. Potter has resigned from the force and has been charged with second-degree manslaughter for the shooting. The 20-year-old man was killed during that what should have been a routine traffic stop, sparking anger and fresh protests against police brutality and racial injustice. And we remain in topic. In Minneapolis, the landmark trial of former policeman Derek Chauvin is coming to an end. The jury will decide Monday whether Chauvin, a white 45-year-old ex-police officer, committed murder when he knelt down on George Floyd's neck, a black man, while arresting him, causing his death. The trial is a test of how the United States will deal with police racism. Anti-racism protests continue through the weekend in Minneapolis, Chicago, and Portland. Chauvin faces charges of second-degree murder, but the jury might choose to find him guilty on third-degree murder or manslaughter or acquit him altogether. Chauvin has pleaded not guilty to murder and manslaughter charges, arguing that he was following the training he received during his 19 years on the force. Obviously, I hope that there's a guilty charge and, you know, nobody wants somebody to be guilty, but I, I hope that that is what ends up happening. Um, I don't think it will, and I think that the city is kind of preparing for that to happen right now. They're boarding the buildings up and um, the National Guard is out in preparation for the bad news, um, but I really hope that there is good news. I hope that he is guilty and, and justice gets served, all, all of them. Uh, because if you do what they did to George Floyd on a perfectly sober 20-year-old, that person would die as well. So it's, I think it's invalid. Uh, and my hope is that he gets convicted. Minnesota right now is very um, polarized when it comes to policing. So I think if a precedent was set, then um, things might change here. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. China and Russia will together produce over 100 million doses of the Russian-designed Sputnik V vaccine, Russia's direct investment fund reported. The agreement involves China's Hualan Biological Bacterin and Shenzhen Yuanxin GenTech companies, in whose facilities the jab will be manufactured, which will be used to immunize more than 50 million people. The efficacy of the Sputnik V vaccine is a 96.6% and the collaboration with China will allow Russia to significantly increase its production capabilities. The new contract establishes both companies' commitment to a long-term partnership in terms of production. On Sunday, El Salvador received a batch of 96,000 AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccines donated by the World Health Organization due to the COVAX system. The Salvadoran Minister of Health, Francisco Lavi, received the shipment of the San Oscar Arnulfo Romero International Airport. This was the third batch of COVID-19 vaccines arriving in the Central American nation. El Salvador has registered so far over 67,000 COVID-19 cases and more than 2,000 deaths due to the virus, experiencing a slight drop in cases after a harsh peak in 2020 when cemeteries collapsed in several municipalities of the capital San Salvador.
A load of the Chinese Sinovac vaccine against COVID-19 arrived in Chile this Sunday. An Air France plane carrying containers of the Chinese Sinovac vaccine against COVID-19 arrived in the capital Santiago this Sunday, April 18th. The vaccination process in Chile started on 24th December with medical personnel. Authorities hope to vaccinate 80% of the Chilean population by 30th June. And also a shipment of 864,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccines against COVID-19 arrived this Sunday in Argentina, arranged through the World Health Organization Global Vaccine Access Fund, COVAX. Argentina is also purchasing vaccines from Russia and signed an agreement with Cuba to produce the upcoming Cuban Soberana job. This new batch is part of the 9 million vaccines acquired by Argentina through the COVAX mechanism, of which they had already received over 200,000 last March. With this shipment, Argentina has received a little more than 7.2 million doses from different laboratories, and nearly 800,000 people have already received the two doses. A new shipment of Sputnik V vaccines from the Russian laboratory Gamaleya is expected to arrive from Russia. Argentina is facing a new increase in the number of cases, especially in the Buenos Aires metropolitan region. Each vaccine that arrives in Argentina is a breath of hope that can turn the page of the pandemic in our country. We have to value that Argentina received doses on a sustained basis. We have already received more than 8 million doses. Health authorities in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro have started vaccinating teachers for the first time. Teachers are considered a high-priority group as the city's council pushes to reopen schools, which had been closed during a lockdown. Teachers and other educational professionals, 55 or older, were scheduled to be vaccinated first, with younger teachers due to get their jobs next weekend. Public schools reopening has been a controversial matter in Rio de Janeiro, as deaths from the coronavirus in Brazil are currently numbering approximately 3,000 a day. that does not know how to write, that can do the handwriting movement, I put him on my lap and hold his hand. When it's time to read, I notice that if he's on my lap, it works better. But the pandemic took all this from us. It is very discouraging to see the child sitting down, cornered, without being able to play. Colombian police have clashed with protesters at a rally against COVID-19 lockdown measures. Protesters have marched in the capital, Bogota, and blocked traffic as they demonstrated against the economic impact of coronavirus restrictions. The police used extensive force to try dispersing protesters. The government has recently imposed new restrictions on movement and also a nightly curfew in municipalities where intensive care units are near full capacity. According to health authorities, nearly 17,000 new cases and 380 deaths were reported in Colombia over the last 24 hours. The disease is very terrible. We aren't denying that. I lived it. Last year I was in bed for 15 days because of the coronavirus. But I'll tell you what's stronger than the disease, the economic crisis. Because if you're hungry, you cannot live. India reported a record daily increase of 275 COVID-19 cases since the start of the pandemic. The authorities also reported 1,620 new deaths in the last 24 hours, which raised the total death toll to more than 177,000. To date, the Asian nation accumulates more than 14 million new positive cases, while 12 million patients have already recovered. The Minister of Health, Harsh Vardhan, assured that the government is working to warranty oxygen and continuous supply of vaccines to the whole population. France is imposing a compulsory 10-day quarantine on travelers arriving from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and South Africa. Flights from Brazil were suspended until at least next Friday because of concern about the P1 variant of the coronavirus, which is more contagious than the original strain and can also reinfect those who have had the original virus. Although flights from Argentina, Chile, and South Africa will not be suspended, all rivals from those countries will have to submit to the quarantine or face fines. Arrivals from Frank Guyane and the Hantils will also be subjected to tests before and after their flights.
and we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. In occupied Palestine, the Israeli regime has been arresting and harassing candidates in the upcoming Palestinian elections, Prime Minister Mohammed Sayyid denounced. He also called on the United States President Joe Biden to put pressure on Tel Aviv to stop illegal Israeli colonial settlements on Palestinian land. We condemn the occupation authorities' arrest of a number of candidates for the election in the city of Jerusalem and their prohibition of holding a press conference for the factions participating in the legislative elections scheduled to take place on May 22nd. We continue our efforts with our international partners to remove Israeli obstacles and work to facilitate holding the election in the Holy City. We call on the new American administration to quickly and seriously and effectively intervene to curb the lust for colonial expansion which includes plans to establish more than 12,000 settlements units in the West Bank, of which 540 are in Jabal Abug name, South of Jerusalem. With a record of aggressions against other peoples, the United States and Japan are in no position to define the international order. China said on Monday against, against strongly rejected a joint Japanese-U.S. statement released on Friday, in which both governments attempted to issue a wide set of guidelines for the Asia-Pacific region. Japan cannot represent the international community and are in no position to define the international order let alone do they have the right to impose their own standards on others. While talking about free and open, the U.S. and Japan are actually ganging up to form cliques and funding block confrontation. It is the true threat to the regional peace and stability and wanton sabotage to the international rule and order. What Japan and the U.S. should do is to reflect on their own history of aggression and correct wrong behaviors of violation of human rights in other countries, rather than interfering in China's internal affairs, smearing the image of other countries, destabilizing and curbing the country's development under the pretext of human rights issues. The Chinese people will never allow this, nor will the people of the world. At least 96 soldiers have been killed in the past two days after a heavy fighting erupted near Yemen's Marib city. Houthi rebels fighters launched an offensive on the government's last northern toehold. Aircraft of a military coalition led by Saudi Arabia provided air support to the government ground forces. The loss of Marib will be a heavy blow for the Yemeni government, currently based in the southern city of Aden, and for the Saudi backers. The rebels see Marib as a strategic prize that will give them more bargaining power in peace talks, but Washington says must begin soon. The conflict has killed tens of thousands of people since Saudi Arabia and its allies intervened in 2015. Syria is set to hold presidential elections on May 26. The elections are widely expected to give President Bashar Assad a fourth seven-year term. It is unclear whether any candidates will run against him, but the parliament said they can present their nomination to the Constitutional High Court, starting on Monday. Syria has been in civil war since 2011, when the Arab Spring inspired protests against the Assad family, role turned into an armed insurgents in response to a brutal military crackdown. I invite those who wish to run for the position of president of the Syrian Arab Republic to submit their candidacies to the Supreme Constitutional Court within a 10-day period starting Monday morning, April 19th. The Syrian citizens living abroad will be able to vote at Syrian embassies on Thursday, May 20, 2021. The citizens residing in Syria will be able to vote on Wednesday, May 26, 2021. Three people have been killed and 20 others injured in a police crackdown on protesters in Pakistan. Lahore police spokesperson said supporters of the Tarek il Abaik Pakistan party attacked police with a patrol bomb and took custody of five police officers. Meanwhile, the party spokesperson said that police moved on the party supporters at the group's offices in Lahore, and several of the group's supporters were killed and others wounded in the violence. 
Pakistan's government banned the Lebaik Pakistan party last week after supporters took to the streets to protest the arrest of their leader, cleric Saad Srizvi. We told the police, neither we have weapons nor are we terrorists, but they started firing on us and used tear gas. Many supporters became martyrs, and those who were martyred had one slogan, O oh Prophet, we are here for you. Expel French ambassador and cut down relations with France. And Russia's main security agency has arrested two Belarusians who were allegedly plotting to overthrow the Belarusian government. Russian authorities said the two men, Alexander Ferura, a former spokesperson for the Belarusian president, and Yuras Siyankovich, a lawyer, were also planning to kill President Alexander Lukashenko. The Russian agency said the two suspects come to Moscow to meet with opposition-minded generals with whom they detailed plans for a military coup. The two have been handed over to Belarus. Nationwide protests against Lukashenko broke out last year, following his dispute election win, and since then security forces arrested more than 34,000 people. We have discovered the work of clearly foreign special services, most likely the Central Intelligence Agency, or FBI. I don't know which of the Americans were working. We have them under control. After well-known Avtukovic and others. I don't want to name surnames. We found out they wanted to return to Minsk and plan an assassination attempt on the president and his children. On Monday, the European Union imposed sanctions on 10 Myanmar junta officials and two conglomerates linked to the military over the coup and bloody crackdown of protesters last February. Uh, the news is that uh, we adopted a second much larger package of sanctions affecting 10 individuals and also two economic entities belonging to the military. It's once again clear that uh, the humanitarian aid to the people of Myanmar it needs to be increased. We decided to increase it by 9 million euros, but the important thing is to stop all the repression. And we have come to the end of this news brief, but remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesuitenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesuit English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.